Hello everyone. Uh, in this video lecture, we are going to go through an example of drawing a root locus for a given system. The system that we have is given in the form of a transfer function. GP of S is equal to 4 over S plus 2. So 4 plus S plus 2 is our GP of S. For the controller, GC of S, we consider KP, the proportion of controller. And then we want to draw the root locus for this system and compare the result with what we can get with MATLAB. And there are a couple of additional steps as well. We need to com compute, if possible, the value of KP such that given the step response of the closed loop system, the settling time 5% is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. So this is something that we need to figure out whether it's possible or not. If it's possible, we, we just find out the proper value for KP. Then we will find the steady state error to the step input for the same closed loop system. And then we will find the range of values of KP such that the closed loop system is viable stable. Okay, so for this system, indeed we have only a single port. It's quite... Uh, let's say one of the simplest cases for which you can draw the root locus. First, we need to write down L of S, which is in the form of GC times GP of S. And this will be equal to KP times 4 over S plus 4. Or we can write it as 4 times KP times 1 over S plus 4. 4 times kp will be our rho, so we will have rho times n over d of s, or rho times 1 over s plus 4. So this will be our l of s, and now you can see that for n, numerator of the transfer function, we have 1, and for d of s, we have s plus 4. So there are one, there is one pole, and there are no zeros. Therefore, we can also write down that n, which is the number of the poles, is equal to 1. m, which is the number of the zeros, is equal to 0 for this example. And then the difference, which is r, and it's equal to n minus m, is equal to 1 as well. Okay, these are the information that we will need. To start drawing the root locus, we will uh, have two graphs, let's say, one for positive locus and one for the negative locus. We can start by drawing an empty S-plane for each one. So this will be used for the positive locus. And the second one will be used for the negative locus. Imaginary axis and real axis. As the first step, we uh, show the location of the open loop pole of the system. Where do we have it? We have the pole of the open loop system at s plus 4 equal to 0 or s equal to minus 4. This is the open loop pole of the system. I assume that it's here. So this is minus 4 and here which is minus 4 as well. Okay. Uh, well, indeed at the denominator we have s plus 2. So I will just uh, correct it. We have s plus 2 here, s plus 2 here, s plus 2, s plus 2, and the pole of the open loop system will be at minus 2. Just correct everything. So at minus 2, we have the open loop pole of the system. For the row, we still have it in the form of 4 times kp. This is also important to keep in mind. Okay, so we have n equal to 1. It means that for each of the positive locus and negative locus, we will have one branch. So one branch for 
PL and one branch for NL. In total, we will have two branches, okay? But since we draw positive locus and negative locus on different graphs, we will have one branch for each one. M is equal to zero and R is equal to one, and this means that we will have, since R is equal to one, we will have one asymptote. There will be one asymptote for our positive locus and one for the negative locus. Uh, since we we have a single asymptote, okay, we it's not that important to find out the point of abscissa. We have a single asymptote x a for sure will be on the real axis. So it's not important to find out where it is because it will just determine the, the starting point of the asymptote. However, we can still find it if you wish. So x a will be equal to sum of z i's minus sum of p i's over n minus m. For zero, we have nothing. So there are no zeros. Zero minus for the p i's for the pole, we have only 2 over n minus m, which is equal to 1. So point of abscissa will be at minus 2, but as I mentioned, it is not that important. We know that the asymptote will start at the point minus 2 on the real axis. We can find the angle of the asymptotes. So R times QCA, we need to get it for both the positive locus and the negative locus. For each one, we have the expression as the rule number three. So we have two H plus one times pi for the positive locus and 2h times pi for the negative locus. And since we have a single asymptote, h will be equal to 0 for both cases. Therefore, and r is equal to 1, so qca will be equal to, if I replace h with 0, we will have pi for the positive locus and 0 for the negative locus. Now I can draw the asymptotes. Yeah? For positive locus, we will have it starting at the point minus 2, going towards minus infinity, because the QCA, the, the angle of the asymptote with the real axis is equal to pi. And I think I'm going to draw it with by highlighting. Uh, or maybe it's better if I do it with a thicker pen. So this will be the asymptote for the positive locus and this will be the asymptote for the negative locus. We have the asymptote drawn. We have the starting point for our branches because we know that the branch will start from the open loop pole of the system. In this case it will go towards infinity using the asymptote. We can determine the parts of the real axis that belong to the root locus. If you look at our, let's say, poles and zeros of the system, we can divide the real axis into two segments. From minus infinity till minus 2, and from minus 2 till plus infinity. To determine that each one of them belongs to the positive locus or negative locus, we count the number of the poles on the right hand side of the segment. So if you if you consider the segment from minus infinity to till minus 2, this segment, we can see that there is 
one pole on the right side if you consider the segment from minus 2 to plus infinity we can see that there are zero poles and zeros one is an odd number therefore this will belong to the positive locus and the second segment from minus 2 to plus infinity will belong to the negative locus it should also be kind of obvious because we, we see that the asymptotes that we draw they also lie on the real axis so for this uh, system it is a kind of obvious how the root locus will look like the branch will start from the pole at the point minus 2 for the positive locus let me use another color for the positive locus it will go towards minus infinity on the real axis in this direction and for the negative locus it will go towards plus infinity again on the real axis with this direction so keep in mind that for our root locus drawings we always need to it, or let's say it's better to to put the direction okay because it determines from which point the the direction in which the value for the row or kp increases for the break in and break out point it is kind of obvious that there are no break away points no break in or break away points because our branches always lie on the real axis but to to make sure we can still refer to the formula that we have n times d prime minus m prime times d equal to zero n is equal to one so one times d is equal to s plus two d prime will be equal to one minus m prime is equal to zero times d which is s plus two and we see that this is impossible so there are no break in or break away points here the next thing to figure out is the angle of departure even though it is again obvious in this case for the positive locus the angle of departure from the pole will be equal to pi so alpha dip is equal to pi and for the neg for the pos uh, for the negative locus the alpha departure is equal to zero degrees because we see that it departs from the hole with this angle we can still refer to the formula that we have for determining the angle of departure if you remember I and I mentioned it several times you just need to apply the phase condition and in, in the vicinity of the pole that we have here you can either refer to the angle of departure formula that we have I will just write it down over here so alpha Q times alpha departure and Q is equal to 1 will be equal to sum of phi i's minus sum of theta i's plus 2k plus 1 times pi for the positive locus and plus 2k times pi for the negative locus where k starts from 0 and we have it for the positive locus and negative locus so there are no let's say pole or zeros that we find out the angle from them towards the test point nearby so everything here will be zero we have only a single pole and we are finding out the angle in the vicinity of that pole and we will set k equal to zero because we have only a single pole over there so the alpha departure will be equal to 
pi for the positive locus and zero for the negative locus. Alternatively, you can apply the angle condition in the vicinity of the pole and you should get exactly the same value. So you would set phase of n over d equal to phase of minus one over rho and that should be equal to pi plus 2h pi or 2h pi for the positive locus and negative locus. If you apply the phase condition in the vicinity of the pole that we just had, you will get the, the departure angles as we figured out. So I think that that's all kind of. We, we have no angle of arrival because there are no zeros in this system such that the branches end up at those zeros and our root locus will look like what we have here. So again one branch will start from the pole at minus 2, it will move towards minus infinity on the real axis and that's for positive locus. For the negative locus the branch will start at the pole at minus 2 and it will approach plus infinity on the real axis. Now let's have a look at the at our example. We also need to to com compare it with what we get from MATLAB. I already have drawn it. You can see the positive locus drawn here and the negative locus drawn here. So over here, after determining the transfer function for GP, I have used R locus of GP and over here for the negative locus I have used R locus of minus GP and you can see that they are basically the same as what we have obtained in uh, by our manual drawing. Let's have a look at the next points. We want to compute if possible the value of KP such that given the step response of the closed loop system settling time 5 percent settling time is equal to 0 0.5 seconds there's, we have a first order system. So 5% settling time will be equal to, could be approximated, let's say, as three times the time constant. And we want this to be equal to 0 0.5 seconds. 0 0.5. Therefore, the time constant that we need to have will be equal to 0 0.5 over 3. That's what we want to have. The 5% set, the, the settling time in the PM. We need to have 0 0.5 over 3. But then we need to see whether it is possible or not. Or what value of kp or rho we need to have for this case. If we we, we we know that the amplitude condition, amplitude of n over d, would be equal to amplitude of minus 1 over rho. On the other hand, 0 0.5 over 3 will be will be equal to, let me give you the exact value, and we will see whether it belongs to the positive locus or negative locus. Yeah? Zero point five over three is equal to zero point one six six seven approximately. So our the pole that we are interested to have will be located at s equal to minus one over t. Okay. Let's call it s one. So minus one over t will be equal to minus one over zero point one six six seven. Or we could directly refer to the the original value of t. So minus 1 over 0 0.5 over 3 or minus 
3 over 0 0.5 which will be equal to minus 6. So S1 will be at minus 6. If we find out the point minus 6, let's say it is here, we can see that it belongs to the positive locus. S equal to minus 6 belongs to our positive locus. We need to determine the value of the row for that. So we apply the amplitude condition at s equal to minus 6. For n we have 1. For d amplitude of d at s equal to minus 6 we have s plus 2 so minus 6 plus 2 will be equal to amplitude of 1 over rho and we know that rho is positive. So out of this we will get rho equal to 4 plus 4 in the end. And since rho is equal to 4 times kp, 4 is equal to 4 times kp, therefore kp will be equal to 1. With kp equal to 1, the, the closed loop pole of the system will be located at minus 6. And if we have that, the 5 person settling time will be equal to the desired value that we are interested in, or 0 0.5. So that's possible for the first point we did it. it it's possible to have settling time equal to 0 0.5 and we figure out that kp will be equal to 1 in that case we need to find the steady state error for, to r as a step input for the same closed loop system with kp equal to 1 when kp is equal to 1 we see that uh, for our closed loop system we have let, let's let's in it write down the closed loop transfer function. So T of S is equal to KP times two over S plus two over one plus two times KP over S plus two. We know that KP is equal to two one. Therefore we will have S plus 2 plus 2kp two over 2kp and this will give us with k, by setting kp equal to 1 we will have 2 over S plus 4. Uh, okay, I guess I did some I will double check to see whether it's correct or not because for the closed loop system we are supposed to have the pole at minus 6. Okay, but now by setting kp equal to 1 we have the pole at minus 4. I will have a second look at this. However, in order to find out the steady state error for the For the first order system that we have, we can also refer to the kp or error constant, which is limit of L of s as s goes towards zero. In this case, our L of s is in the form of 2 times kp. Okay, I think I, I find it out. We have kp times 4. kp times 4, so 4, 4, and therefore this will be 4 over and s plus 6. Okay, so that's correct. We have limit of kp times 4 over s plus 2 as s goes towards 0, where kp is equal to 1. Therefore, this, this will give us 4 over 2 or 2. The error constant is like that and steady state error or E infinity will be equal to 1 over 1 plus kp which will give us 1 over 1 plus 2 or 1 over 3 0 0.33.
That's the steady state error that we get. And then we need to find out the range of values of kp such that the closed loop system is by boy stable. If you look at the root locus plot that we have, we can see that for positive locus, the system is always by boy stable because the, the branch always remains in the left half plane. So for rho bigger than zero, it's always stable. For the negative locus, we can see that for some value, of rho, it, the system is stable, but then after a point, it becomes the system becomes unstable. So we should indeed figure out the the value of rho at this point at the origin. We know that it's a negative value, but we need to find out the exact value. For that, we can apply the amplitude condition. One over s plus two is equal to amplitude of minus one over rho. We know that s is equal to zero. So we will have 1 over amplitude of 0 plus 2, which is 2, is equal to 1 over amplitude of rho. And this gives us amplitude of rho equal to 2, and rho will be equal to minus 2 because we are in the, on the negative locus. Okay, so rho is equal to minus 2. We need to find out the value for kp. kp is equal to rho over 4 kp will be equal to minus 2 over 4 or minus 0 0.5. And then we can say that for rho bigger than minus 0 0.5, the system will be bibo stable. If it becomes smaller than that, the system will become unstable. All right, so that's all for, for this video. It, it became a bit long because I wanted to go through all the details but you can see that drawing the root locus for a system like this with a single pole is quite straightforward. There will be one branch for the positive locus, one branch for the negative locus and both of them will lie on the real axis all the time. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next video.